Okay, I'm here at the um, one of the apiaries where we've got some top bar hives, and it's the 3rd of April 2011. The bees are looking good. There's bees flying in and out of all the hives. This is a top bar hive, which has, as you can see, bees coming in and out, bringing pollen in, doing all the right sorts of things. And we've already peeked in here, but I'm going to open it again to show you how much honey is left after the winter. Now I'm opening one end of the hive here and you can see uh, what looks like an empty comb with bees busy cleaning it. And if I move that away you can see that the next comb has got a good deal of honey on it. I've already freed the attachments that the bees had made to the sides. They will make attachments when the combs get a bit of weight to them. They seem to be able to sense when the comb needs a bit of extra support. So I'm just moving that one away and you can see the next one is full of honey. Loads of honey in here. Bees all walking around on the comb there looking quite content. I've just seen one bee there with deformed wings. I'm going to point it out. It's just here. This bee has got showing symptoms of deformed wing virus and uh, that is an indicator to us that we probably need to do an icing sugar treatment because it almost certainly means they've got a varroa problem. I'm looking on the next comb. Again we've got loads of honey here. And now I'm moving this one away and the next one is actually sealed brood. So I'm going to lift this one out and take a look. And I think we probably need to have the sugar duster ready to give this one a bit of a, a, bit of a treatment. Okay, so I'm going to lift this one out and Anne's going to give them a bit of a dust. I can see a couple more bees there that are showing signs of deformed wing virus. We're just going to puff icing sugar over the backs of the bees like this and that will encourage the bees to groom themselves or groom each other. Okay. Yeah, I can see there's another one, another one there with showing yeah, it's a bit of a breeze today, so that doesn't help the sugar dusting. <laughs> okay, put this one back in. It's a little bit on the cool side today, if anything, for doing this job, but it's important that we knock down as many varroa as possible at this time of the year, otherwise they will build up quickly and then the bees will have a serious problem a little later on. Okay, let's do the same one with this. Again, quite a decent amount of sealed brood there. The main thing is to get the icing sugar, the powdered sugar, onto the backs of the bees, trying to avoid shooting it into the any open brood that's present. I don't think it'll matter if uh, a tiny bit gets into the into the open brood, but it's not something we want to we want to do more than we absolutely have to. Okay, that's got full coating on them. It's important to get them back together quickly because we don't want to risk chilling the brood. As I'm doing this I'm just checking visually to make sure these combs aren't attached but generally speaking brood combs don't get attached it's the honey combs that tend to be stuck to the side and we're going to give this one a little treatment. I can see some um, drone brood there now. There's a few drone cells where the queen's laid into so that means that they are starting to raise drones. 
which I always take as a good sign that the colony feels confident. And of course with natural cone they can build drone wherever they fancy, wherever suits them. I'm seeing I would say a worrying number of bees here with deformed wings. So I'm hoping that this treatment is going to do the trick and bring the varroa levels down to a, a level where they can cope. However, there is a good population of bees, so although there clearly is a, vari a, a virus issue in this colony, they seem to be managing it to some extent. Let's brood on this comb as well. The bees are temperamentally quite calm. They're not coming out and chasing me, stinging me or anything. I did. That's what happens when you make a sudden movement. I was I, up until that moment. I was actually quite uh, careful in my movements, and I just was a little bit clumsy there. And that just sudden jolt is is, a, is often a signal to the bees to get a little friskier than than they were before. Maybe you could just dust that down while it's inside. So you, it's perfectly possible to dust the bees when they're still on the comb without taking lifting the comb out and that's probably the preferred option but I did in this case want to see what else was going on on the on the uh, brood combs okay do you want to carry on dusting in there this treatment with uh, powdered sugar doesn't it's certainly not 100% effective and to be maximally effective it really needs to be done once a week for three consecutive weeks because the idea is to interrupt the varroa's brood cycle which takes about 9, 10, 11 days to turn around so most of the varroa at the moment will be in cells, in brood cells so our purpose here is to knock down varroa that are on the backs of bees, the phoretic for her. And then we need to come back in a week's time and knock down the next lot that will have emerged by that time. I'm just spraying a little bit of uh, water on these bees here just to get their heads down because they, uh, we need to close this gap to keep the heat in. And there's a couple of rather stubborn bees that have decided that they'd rather just hang out in the gap here. So I'm just going to give them a nudge. And let's be a little bit more careful about moving this next one. You'll notice, however, that the bees have calmed down quite quickly. They're not, they, that was just a, you know, to them that was a minor disturbance. And uh, now they're, they've gone back to their, to their work. So. We're not going to classify these as bad-tempered bees just from that one little incident, which was entirely my fault anyway. <laughs> the powdered sugar itself doesn't seem to disturb the bees unduly. They take it in their stride and after all it is powdered sucrose, which is chemically virtually identical to the nectar that they're collecting at the moment. It's not, like it's, it's not like introducing an entirely foreign substance to the hive, which obviously we do our best to avoid doing. I think we're going to need to refill our, our little dusting device. Okay. 
There's just a little bit of drone brood in this one and I think we're probably now come to the end of the of the brood. Oh yes, there's a there's a wax moth grub there climbing up the side. Top bar hives are by no means immune to the wax moth, but because there are no little cracks and fissures to hide in as there are on conventional hives, uh, I think the wax moth have a much tougher time of it. That one um, has obviously hatched from an egg that was probably laid in between two top bars by its mother and uh, is now going to have a tough time because the bees are going to be chasing it around until they've gotten rid of it. Okay, so a light dusting on the backs of the bees is all that's required. When the bees groom the varroa off themselves, off each other, they'll then fall through the mesh floor and become ant food. Apart from doing a varroa treatment, our aim here is to ensure that the hive is arranged in a way that the bees can now expand and they've got plenty of comb for the queen to lay eggs in and to start rebuilding their stores. Is that free? Yeah, yeah that looks good. Okay, and you can see that the bees have eaten quite a bit of the honey over the, over the winter, um, but they've, there's still plenty left, which is a great sign. These bees are quite competent in their uh, store so building. What I'm going to do now is to put the comb, put the hive back together again, so the bees have got room to do everything they need to do. I'm just using the water spray just to get them off the the edge so I don't crush any bees as I do this operation. Using the water spray again to get the heads down between the combs. Sometimes they take a little more encouragement to uh, cut down. If you get the timing right, you can usually catch them when there's no bees in the gap. Put another bar in there. Oh. Sorry.